And just like that, we're at the end of another hour of Cross Defense. It has been great hanging out with you guys for the last 40 minutes or so. We got about 20 to go. We're in our last segment. We have equipped the mind. We have excited the imagination. And now we are on to comforting the soul. I was uh, asked a question this last week. A, A listener reached out to me and wanted to know what I would tell someone about suffering. The question was really about uh, why do good people suffer? And, and there's a whole bunch of stuff to talk about when it comes to that kind of a question. There's you know, what does it mean to be a good person? There's civil righteousness. There's uh, you know our works and how we are not good people. By nature, we are all sinners. We are all evil, wicked. Our works are nothing but rags, rags, uh, if you really want to think about it. So there's that, all that to deal with, but also this idea of, of just suffering, and the, that was really what was behind the question. And I want to kind of get in this with you. It just so happened that as this question came to me, I was uh, doing a little research for something else for another project, and I was back into a great book. I don't know if you have read this yet. If you haven't, you're missing out. But uh, Brian Wolfmiller's A Martyr's Faith in a Faithless World, a great book. And I was re- reviewing it for another project, and uh, it just it hit at the right moment when one of you listeners reached out to me and wanted to know about suffering. And and so, you know, I'm not going to share what I shared with the person privately, uh, but I am going to go into a detail of the conversation, one specific avenue of it, and that is suffering. Suffering that we endure. You know, Wolf Miller does a great job. Pastor Wolf Miller does a wonderful job in this book of talking about what suffering is. And I recently preached a sermon at my church. I had the opportunity to preach and talked about suffering, how we rejoice in our suffering. When you suffer, when you're going through hardships and hard times, turmoil, what's your disposition? Now, honest question, how do you handle, how do you respond, how do you react to the difficulties, the burdens that come your way? Scripture tells us we are to rejoice in our suffering because when we do that, when we are experiencing suffering, I should say, we are sharing in the cross of Christ. There's so many different passages we could go to. Scripture is clear. Jesus teaches that to follow him is to die. The one who would seek to find his life, to save his life, he will lose it by trying to preserve and trying to avoid suffering. He will lose it. But the one who loses his life who follows Christ, who takes up his cross daily and follows the Lord, that one, that person will find it and and find life eternal without end, true life, the way it was meant to be from the beginning. Uh, Let's go into this idea, though, of what is happening when you're suffering, just so people can understand that, you know, when, when you're going through hard times, there's... There's a couple different ways you could look at it. And, and St. Peter gives us a really good way of understanding suffering. And Wolf Miller writing, St. Saint, Saint Brian <laughs> writing, gives us a way of understanding this as well. So I'm just going to read from this book for a second, and then we'll talk some more about it. We know that the devil uses suffering to try to destroy our faith, Wolf Miller says. Peter tells us God's purpose in suffering is not to destroy us, but that God's purpose is to test the genuineness of our faith. Wolf Miller continues, Peter uses the picture of a metal refinery, and he points us to Malachi 3, verses 2 and 3, which read, But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Like a refiner. The Lord refines his silver, his precious metal. Wolf Miller continues, Gold and silver are not entirely pure. Other metals are always mixed in. 24 karat gold is almost 100% gold. 12 karat gold is 50% gold and 50% other metals. Sterling silver jewelry is often stamped with 925 on it because it is 92.5% silver. Fine silver is 99.9% silver. To purify these metals, you apply heat. 
when the metal is liquefied, the dross floats to the top. If the metal is pure, you see it when it's hot enough. There is no dross. Peter says that our suffering is the fire that heats up our faith. If there is dross, that is disingenuousness, hypocrisy, and things like this, it is exposed. It floats to the surface. And in suffering, the Lord takes these things away. The crucible is for silver, and the furnace is for gold, and the Lord tests hearts. Proverbs 17, 3. Proverbs 17, 3. Suffering, fire, heat. You ever heard that phrase, right? The, the, you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Things are getting hot, getting uncomfortable. You want to get away from the stove, away from the oven, away from the thing that's making you uncomfortable. What is God using that heat for, that fire? He's using it to purify you, dear Christian. He's using it to make that dross, that hypocrisy, the, the, the disingenuousness, the guile within you to float to the top so it can be removed so that you can be pure silver, pure gold. It's purifying you. Now, I often like to talk about when I'm teaching on this with my previous congregations and as I was speaking to the listener who reached out this past week, I like to talk about how the devil tempts us, but our Lord tests us. Lead us not into temptation. The the Lord does not tempt you. And here's the difference, really, to kind of boil it down. Temptation, temptation destroys. The goal of the devil is to tempt you into sin, to, to destroy you. And your old Adam loves this. Your old Adam wants to succumb to temptation, to live in the darkness, to sin, to be the old Adam. But the new man, the new man is tested. The new man wants to resist temptation, wants to do what is right, wants to be sanctified, wants to live in his justification, wants to be Christ's man. So temptation, it tears you down. It destroys you. The devil is a destroyer, the destroyer. God is the creator. The devil can't create. He can't create a single thing. All the devil can do is lie. That's why he's the father of lies. He can't even create sentences. He can't create words. He can't create a single thing. All he can do is manipulate that which is already made. God is the creator. He speaks things into being. He creates from nothing. He brings to life. He's the one who builds up. The devil tears down. Think of it this way. Explosions can do two things. Um, They can be used for two different purposes, I should say. If someone puts a bomb in a building and blows it up, normally that's a bad thing. It's destroying the building. It's bringing it down. But if someone puts that bomb in the building on purpose to raise the building, to to purposely bring down a a broken-down old building, you wouldn't call that bad. Same device, same ultimate result as you see it from the outside, but there's for two different things happening for two different purposes, right? One is, is destroying that building just for the sake of destroying it. The other one is removing the decay, removing that which is not safe, removing the broken, the decrepit, so that something better can be built in that spot. Something can be erected that is good and strong and will survive, well, in the case of the reference, forever. You're the building, my friends. The devil wants to tempt you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to blow you up and annihilate you to where there is nothing left of you. But the Lord, if you are enduring hardship and suffering, from his hand it is a test, a fiery trial. He is removing the bad, the decrepit, the broken, the sinful, so that something strong and firm, immortal, imperishable can be built 
upon that foundation. It is generally regarded as a bad thing to be cut by a knife. If someone was to cut you, you wouldn't like it. And yet you go to the doctor, you have surgery, and what does the doctor do? He intentionally cuts you open. Same tool, a blade. Same immediate result, the ripping open of your flesh. Injury, wound. And yet, two completely different outcomes. Get knifed in the alley, cut for no good reason. It's, it's painful. It hurts. There's no good that comes out of it. It's just, it's just agony. It's just destruction. But get knifed by your surgeon and you'll be on the mend. You'll be doing well, getting better. It's for a purpose. Suffering. When suffering comes to us, when suffering comes to you, dear listener, as a Christian, that suffering is cause to rejoice. The fiery trial is upon you. The cross that the Lord told you is yours to bear, to follow after him. It is the sharing of his cross. Now, you're not going to be hung on a cross, I don't imagine. Maybe you are somewhere if you're listening in some part of the world where they're, they're doing extreme persecutions and, and their martyrdom is still a, very much a reality. Perhaps you will die like the Lord did, literally bearing your cross. Perhaps your suffering is milder in that regard, some, some different form of pain. And, and here's another part of the conversation I had, and this is a little off topic, but it's kind of all in the same realm. Suffering is suffering, okay? There, there's a very big temptation, again, temptation from the devil, to see one's suffering as greater or lesser than someone else's suffering. This is false. This is not a good practice. This is what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to start ranking and organizing pain and suffering so that you see yourself as the one who's suffering the worst. When my son was diagnosed with cancer, a brother pastor reached out to me, and it was all in, in, well intended. And we were talking about what was going on, and he was there for me trying to let me, you know, let me know he was in my corner and all that kind of stuff. And he mentioned, you know, something about his own family and, and what one of his kids was going through. But then he, he paused and he backpedaled and he said, oh, but that's nothing compared to what your son's going through, what your family's going through. And I then stopped him. And I said, no, my friend, I appreciate what you're doing, but let's not go down that road because the hurt that your child's going through for you right now in your family is just as severe as the hurt my child's going through with my family. Hurt is hurt. Sure, certain, certain types of suffering are, are grander from our, our human perspective. Maybe they're sexier. They're, they get more attention. There's, there's campaigns. There's kids against cancer and there's ribbons and things like that that all go. Maybe there's some of that for some issue that someone's going through and not for another. So, you know, we're tempted to rate these things, but pain is pain. Suffering is suffering. And for the person going through it at that moment, it's, it's extremely painful. It's hard. We don't need to rate our suffering. Everyone in this world is hurting because we live in a sinful world. We live in a broken world. Your pain is just as painful, well, no matter what it is, is just as painful to you as my pain is to me. The devil wants us to see that Maybe my pain is, is greater than your pain. I want you to know that I'm, I'm going through a lot more than you are, and I'm going to quantify it. I'm going to, I'm going to delineate it for you, maybe even psychologically or subconsciously, not even realizing it. I'm going to make sure you know that my given situation is worse than, than yours to validate what I'm going through and the hurt I'm going through. It almost becomes like a trophy. It almost becomes like a prize to be the one who's going through the most pain. And this is a, a real issue for a lot of people. We get in these routines where we think we have to, to maximize, magnify the pain we're going through for other people so they know just what we're experiencing. We're almost fishing for sympathy. Let's just avoid it. 
Let's avoid it by realizing that everyone's suffering. It's not to minimize minimize it at all. That's not what I'm saying. We're not. I'm not trying to dismiss suffering. Actually, what I'm doing is opening up the gate to to let in it all, let all the suffering in to to recognize to confirm that yes, we're all hurting. Yes, we're all suffering, and that is why we need Christ. That is why we need the one who uses the knife as a scalpel. That is why we need the one who uses the explosive device not to destroy the building for no good reason, but to bring down the old sinful Adam so that the new man can stand in his place in the foundation where he is built upon the cross so that that structure can be erected and stand strong. This is why we need Christ, because we're all suffering. We need Christ because we're all suffering because we're all bad people. No one's good. Not on his own. Not apart from the Lord. No one, not a single person is good. We are all wretched. Our works are all as filthy rags apart from the cross, apart from Christ. the refiner's fire. When you are going through suffering, dear Christian, understand that suffering to be the refiner's fire. That testing is building you up, strengthening you, making you pure, pure treasure, pure gold. It is not meant to tear you down. It is not meant to destroy you. That is not what the Lord does. That's what Satan does. He's the destroyer. God is the creator. He builds you up. Christ has won. The cross stands fixed. The foundation has been laid. And the building, the church, the temple, made up of living stones of you and me, It is being erected. Those stones are solid and formed strong because Christ, your Lord, is forming you. Amen. All right, guys, thank you so much for this last hour. The first episode of Cross Defense 2021 is in the bag. I really appreciate all your time. I really appreciate that you listen and that you engage and that you trust me enough to reach out and ask these kind of questions. So thank you very much for that. It is an honor and a privilege, and I hope one that I will continue to earn from you. If you want to reach out to me, you don't know how to, my website is the easiest way to do it by email. Just go to TyrellBramwell.com, flip to the bottom of the page, and you'll see a contact button there. Go ahead and click that. You can send me an email that way, or you can DM me on Instagram or Facebook. God's blessings to you. Christ be with you, and I will talk to you next week. Cross Defense is a production of KFUO Radio. Find past episodes and support Cross Defense at KFUO.org.